Just like margarita day? Yes, I like snails. <laughs> Why don't I do one of these? Coralie, one of our commenters says, this is the Croatia government answering your distress signal. What is your location? <laughs> I think you have our location. <laughs> it's on <laughs> nautiluslive.org. <laughs> right. Very, very long uh, decimal point string of our latitude and longitude. Don't think it's that precise, but gonna roll with it if you give me your apple id i'll add you on find my friends and you can find me there <laughs> yeah one of the commenters asked what causes such a strict line of demarcation i who knows perhaps Could, we'll find out well i mean this is a sort of sloped area and yeah it looked like it just there. more sediment was accumulated on top of those crests the answer is always gravity <laughs> it affects us all. I feel affected by it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I just love when you, you walk up and down stairwells on the ship and, and you. you know, just at the right moment you feel extremely light and then all of a sudden it's like you're so heavy. Well, Dangerous. You know, sometimes I'm like headed up the stairs and then I'm just suddenly like, why am I so weak? Man, yeah. this is really hard. Like, I forget that I'm on a ship. And all of a sudden, you're like, you feel like you weigh two times as much. It's like a workout. I really like doing things in the gym where you jump, because you like never know where you're going to land. Like, <laughs> suspended in air for a while. It's fun. I've so wanted to use the gym, but I'm a little leery of the moon door in the middle. Yeah, I've also wanted to use the gym, but I'm lazy. <laughs> At least she's honest. <laughs> it's always a unique challenge to you as a treadmill on the ship. Yeah. I hear the elliptical's a little easier, but I haven't tried it. It's you know, great. That kind of sounds like fun. The treadmill? No, the elliptical. Yeah, yeah. Ellipticals are fun. I like the rowing machine. When you're finished with that, Trevor, would you put port rail back up? Yeah. Thank you. I didn't realize they had a rowing machine. Yeah. We got 1.8 rowing machines. <laughs> nice. <laughs> 1.8? What happened to the other 0.2%? Well, it's uh, also a recumbent bike that I've never seen Zoom used. Zoom in, please, Aaron. OK, come wide. Yeah, this is definitely the coral of the dive, this uh, Romilla Gorgia. It's everywhere so far. Yeah, we are. Bob Ballard is making sure we're having fun. Got a question about our internet speed. We don't have any of our um, tech people in the van right now, but I am just amazed that we have internet in the middle of the ocean, frankly. I don't know the exact numbers, but I, I think we have uh, 20 up, 10 down. I thought it was more than 20. And more than 20? 45. Oh, maybe. I don't know. I'm just like strictly guessing because uh, that's not a piece of information I was given. Fair enough. I was I'm, given it years ago and have forgot completely. I'm sure I was told that it's not as as long as it works, which it does. We're good to go. We've been seeing quite a few of these percentage sea stars, along with Romilla Gorgia. 
Militaris. We're uh, sort of on this little bit of a saddle before heading up the rest of the slope to the summit. We're not quite halfway there yet from where we started. So we've got quite a ways to go yet in our dive. We are planning to be diving for a full 24 hours and we are just over that 12 hour mark at this point. I'm hoping as we get a little bit higher up on the seamount, our uh, benthic community will get a little more exciting, more diversity, more density. We're just sort of at that in-between spot. Um, we had the same sort of thing yesterday, during yesterday's dive on seamount C, where we weren't seeing that many animals at this depth. But once we got to about 2,500, we started seeing quite a bit more stuff. So I think we can look forward to a denser community as we make our way up. But if you're uh, one for the sea cucumbers, I have seen quite a few and quite a good diversity of sea cucumbers during this dive. is a sea cucumber after all. <laughs> Look at that football. Trevor, would you come up in Delta, please? You should go down. I am going down. It's not fast enough. You didn't like seeing the football up in there? No, I didn't like that. What? I'm anti footballs. What day is it Saturday? Yes, it is Saturday. I know that because so Friday tomorrow? is when Megan wears her octopus pants. Ice cream exactly, Sunday. that's how I remembered it. <laughs> Sunday, Sunday. Weather's looking great. Sunday, Sunday. We've got about a week left in this expedition. Got another offering up for an alternate watch name, the Mystery Science Theater Watch. Oh, I didn't watch much of Mystery Science Theater back in the day. Is that a KQED show? Kinda. It's like, I believe they'd watch movies, but it was like, what we saw was, I think they were puppets, and they would watch the movies and like comment on them while we were watching them. Yeah, it was mostly just like, B sci fi movies are particularly bad and <laughs> they would just rip on them the whole time. Oh, well, we're watching good I, science. Yeah, this <laughs> uh, I would watch this over a B sci fi movie any day. In fact, I watch this quite often during my day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like eight hours out of my day. Yeah, eight hours of my day I'm watching this. And rewatching it when you get back home to annotate. Yeah, because you know, one watch isn't enough. It truly is not. You never see it all, you know? You never see it all? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Aww, all by yourself? 
This little sea cucumbers are having a grand time. So this could be um, a type of late McGonid sea cucumber, possibly. At the risk of sounding ridiculous, is there an early variety? Oh, yeah, well... <laughs> A late one and an early one. <laughs> like sometimes you have like greater and lesser blah, blah, blahs. Yeah, that, uh, it's actually spelled with a L E A T. Oh, late. 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 Yeah. Late. Late. I've seen a sea, similar sea cucumber on Seamount uh, in the Clarion Clipperton zone, which also has nodules, but that Seamount did not have nodules. What's this little pink thing floating towards Hercules? Huh. That might be a siphonophore. Oh? Oh, yep, that was definitely a siphonophore. You see how it broke apart? <laughs> Whoops. Oops. Just a little thruster wash and it goes all over the place. But then each of those sections will form new colonies of their own, right? Um, it has the possibility to do that. If it can be successful, it, it might do that. Hmm. So those but ones look like the feeding um, polyps which means that, you know, if they get enough food, it's likely that they might be able to to bud and, and start regrowing from there. Oh, they don't go back together? Um, it might be very difficult to stick back together after you've been spread apart. Uh, the feeding ones can't swim, so, you know, it would just be up to chance. I, I don't think they can stick back together. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put the siphonophore back together again. That's true. <laughs> We're going to retire you. <laughs> You're not coming back. <laughs> because if all the king's horses and all the king's men came down to the bottom of the sea mount, um, uh, they... They would die. <laughs> well, unless they've got, like, a submarine or something, and, and it might be very difficult for them to gather and put the siphon <laughs> four back together. I mean, I'd like to see them try. I think you've lost the rhyme scheme here. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that rhymed. <laughs> <laughs> Then again, poetry, true poetry, doesn't have to rhyme. It's the poetry of the sea. Question for the ROV team, if you guys are ready. Yeah. Who works on the ROVs between the dives? Is it the pilot, or is there a separate maintenance crew? <laughs> I wish there was a separate maintenance crew. How cool would that be? No, we do all the maintenance ourselves. Yeah. Yep. Yep, so you guys hose them down when they first come up. Empty the water out of all the pressure housings, and... Uh, yeah, get it ready for the next dive. I've got a deep si uh, philosophical siphonophore question for you. Ready? Oh, wow. How deep is it? Like, 
2,000 meters or 3,000 meters deep? I'd say 2,781.2 meters deep. Okay. <laughs> How did the individuals in a siphonophore colony know what roles to differentiate into creating a functional colony? Like, who knows? How does each one know what to do? Um, I believe they differentiate themselves uh, as their young cells and, and dividing. So sort of in the same way the cells in your body can differentiate, um, the polyps will differentiate when they, they are formed. Ooh, yay, cool sponge. Let's cool do it. Cool sponge. It is a cool sponge. I believe this is a Semperella, a type of glass sponge in the family Pheronomatidae. What I'm looking for for this ID is that it is rooting in sediment, which this clearly is because this is a bunch of nodules and there's a bunch of sediment underneath. And it has sort of this uh, wavy kind of surface. As we zoom in, you'll be able to see that it's sort of a little bit wavy. It's not smooth or flat. And then there's a crinoid on the other side of it. Oh, and look, there's some more associates. You've got a little uh, barnacle, a scalpelid, and it looks like a, a little anemone. Very cool. Okay, I need to move along. I once brought home a pet barnacle. You did? I did. My mom thought I was ridiculous. <laughs> and I had to go take it back because I didn't know what to feed it. Um, they they eat the stuff that's in the water column. So uh, oh my God. barnacles are kind of interesting because uh, they, they use their legs uh, for feeding. So basically when you see the barnacle open and these little tendrils come out, those are actually the barnacle's legs. Um, because they are uh -huh. crustaceans, so related to crabs and shrimps. Okay. I did not know they were considered crustaceans. Wow. Yeah. Barnacles are a really weird okay. group. Uh, there's a number of different uh, forms a barnacle can take. So that one that we were looking at has sort of a... Uh, I almost feel a, I'm ready. Sort of I'm a probably not, foot but I standing think on. And that. we call those gooseneck barnacles. Yeah. So we're still on 195. Because someone thought bearing. it looked like a neck of a goose, okay. I guess. Then you have your typical um, balanoid uh, barnacle shape. Okay. That just sort of adheres to rocks and has like the strongest glue okay. ever. Because you cannot get those things off once they've solidified. They really need to market that barnacle glue. Yeah. It works yeah, underwater. Definitely adheres forever. You can see it on uh, the rocks. You can see like those little little dots that are left behind from barnacles past. The base of the barnacle is still there. It's yeah. amazing. And then uh, <laughs> my favorite barnacle is uh, a rhizocephalin. It's uh, quite a creepy barnacle. It actually takes over a crab or shrimp host and grows inside its host's body as sort of a network of tendrils and uh, sort of zombifies the crab or shrimp. Oh, is that kind of like the um, uh, that one parasite that gets into snails and makes them like walk up to its bird host? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's sort of like that. I, there are a couple, yeah. um, I think, funguses that do that as well. But yeah. the fact that it's actually a barnacle yeah. uh, that does that, I think that's pretty wild. Nature is wild. Gotcha. Yes. So wild. Uh huh. Oh. Oh, hi. that's a nice shrimp. Whoa. Looks like an Aristeid shrimp. Okay, so I'm gonna try to come. Oh, hi. Oh, it's back. It didn't get enough. 
It could have been a Ceratospis, but it was a little too quick. Oh, there it is again. I have to annotate that one later. Watch yeah. the replay. Well, I'm trying to see its rostrum. That's that sort of spike that comes out between the eyes. Zoom in, Aaron. Oh, look at those little legs go. It's, it's trying so hard. It's really hard to catch shrimps in video, uh, but I'm sure it's fun for the pilot to chase the shrimp. Yeah. Okay. Come wide, please. So cute. Your cousins were our dinner tonight, little oh. shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> there are some uh, species of deep water shrimp that are uh, consumed commercially, and those are the heterocarpus. They grow. They live a little bit shallower than this, so. Um, they're usually found in like the 400 Looks like meter we're range. Up again, yeah? I was just uh, about to ask how yeah. we were regularly okay fishing okay for that sort everything? of thing. <laughs> yeah, the commercial yeah. industry. Uh, yeah. There is a little bit of a fishery for them, uh, especially I believe in okay. Japan, they are considered a delicacy. So those are the ebby shrimp, the giant deep water shrimp. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I think that there's like also referred to as sweet shrimp. It can be pretty difficult to, to catch those shrimp just because they don't live in the high densities. So, and, and they do grow slower than uh, shrimps you might have uh, in a aquaculture farm. And the shrimps we had for dinner tonight were really delicious. I did not eat your cousins, dear shrimp. <laughs> I had a land meat. Yeah, I ate a dinosaur. I have no idea what I ate, honestly, because it's not labeled, so it was good, though. Did you say a dinosaur? I think chickens are dinosaurs. When I see them, I look at them, and I'm like, you're a dinosaur. No, they are. <laughs> but more so than any other bird. Like, chickens, like, just the way they walk, the way they talk. Oh, gosh. You know, it's not even that late at night. It's it's a normal time. You shouldn't be breaking down this hard. Uh, time <laughs> is relative. Seeing another one of those sea pens that has a associate, uh, either a star or a basket star wrapped around it. More of these uh, Romilla Gorgia militaris. Ooh, what's this guy? That is weird. Uh, it looks like it's an anemone. I think they might have collected an anemone that looked like this Did during the last it? cruise. Was anybody there for that? Oh, I might have. Maybe it was stuck to the body. rock, right? Yeah, stuck to the rock. Yeah, a really nice long handle. anemone. I think this was collected last cruise. Yeah. He looks embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, so shy. Aww. Thank you. Yeah, otherwise I'd be like, let's collect him. But one of them was already collected, so we're pretty good there. Because that, that's really weird. As Steve was showing me a picture of it, and I, he said, you know, have you ever seen this before? And I hadn't. But now I've seen it again, so maybe it's more common than you think. We just haven't seen it. Sometimes I really love the patterns that the sea cucumbers make in the sand. You have these like That's little it. swirls. Cool. I'm sorry? That is cool. The patterns of the cucumbers. We saw the patterns of the cucumbers on the rocks earlier, kind of scraping the sediment off the top of the rocks. Do they tend to prefer sitting in the, like the, Bare sediment or scraping sediment off rocks or is it totally random? Um, I think they prefer the sediment um, just in general. Uh, but, you know, when you're a cucumber and you find yourself on a rock, you're going to take advantage of it. Right on. Cool. 
but we see more cucumbers on the rocks. Now, more work could be done to see which cucumbers are on rocks and which ones are never on rocks. I feel like we see a lot more of those really uh, light pink cinolacted sea cucumbers on rocks, whereas the, the more robust uh, dark purple ones seem to be on sediment. But that's just sort of um, the pattern that I've been sort of seeing throughout this dive. Cucumber on the rocks. Um, I got a question in the chat about the Tiki on Hercules. Oh, yeah. What's that about, and where is it located on the ROV? Where is it located? It's just above the Magnum manipulator. That's the port manipulator. Um, right by the Niskins. If you're really lucky, and we take a Niskin, and Bubble Cam is in just the right spot, you can catch a glimpse of this mysterious being. So where did the tiki come from? It was carved by a bosun on. Sorry. Yep. Uh, carved by a bosun on, I believe it was. The Brown. Yep. I don't know. The Ronald H. Brown. I looked it up. Bruce. There you go. Yeah. Howden. That was before Nautilus. It's been around longer than Nautilus has. Oh wow. Back when Herc was a wee lad, and uh, <laughs> there's a bunch of problems happening that cruise, and. The bosun carved it, and it brought a bunch of good luck. And they were thinking, well, let's extend the luck. Let's add a tiki to Argus, too. So they added a tiki to Argus, and then a bunch of disasters happened again. So they took it off, and everything well, was right with the world again. You can't have too many tikis. No. I think they cancel each other out. They did. There's like a tiki in reserve for Little Herc, right? Just in I case. don't think so. Well, Nia carved one, but then it was decided that it should be left off until it was needed. Oh, okay. I don't know. I think I heard about her doing that, but I never saw it. It was pretty cute. I don't know where it is right now, but she did a good job. Hey, let's take a look at this uh, primnoa coral, if we can. Unless we're on the move. Uh, we're always on the move, but yeah. I think we can take a look. I just didn't know how urgently we needed to move on. Let's try to get a better view on it. Sorry. I'm happy to go now. I think. Okay, fine. zoom in, please. All right. Yeah, so this one looks like an Arella, too. You can see that. Some of the polyps are closing in that downward position. But this is not that macrocalyx. What am I doing? Um, it could be Norella dichotoma. You see that it has this dichotomous branching, meaning that it's branching yeah. into Vs every time it branches. And then there was an associate on it, a brittle star. And then there's a Caliphacus sponge. So the Caliphacus sponge are the ones that look like mushroom. So it has this little mushroom cap, and the stalk comes into the back side of that cap. So these are stalk sponges in the family Rosellidae. Oh, look at that. We've got tubularid hydrozoans. Oh. So these little guys are actually hydrozoans, family tubularity. I think it's because uh, they live in these little golden tubes. That's where the name comes from. They live in from. the tube. Mm -hmm. Cool. Do they make the tube? They make the tube. The tube is yeah. them, and they are the tube. <laughs> is that like saying I live in my skin? Yeah, pretty much. Oh. <laughs> I mean, if you weren't in your skin, you wouldn't be alive. It's... So how about these rocks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how about these rocks, Coralie? Anything to say? They're rocks. Wow. 
insightful. And they're not just any rocks. They're ocean rocks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. The best ocean rocks, because they are the rocks we can see right now. Best thing about them is their proximity to Herc. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's fish over the right side going off screen. Might be underneath us now. Oh, yep. Yeah. Lower down. Oh, I see it. See it. Oh, he's a little one. Just leaving screen at the bottom. Or Just going back into screen yeah, center. Okay, so this is a little rat tail fish. Another name, common name for the rat tail fish is grenadier. So uh, you can pick your favorite common name to use for these fish. Uh, this one's really small, oh. so it might be in the genus Kumba. It's one of my favorite genuses to pronounce because it's cute. Exciting. Can you zoom on Argus, please? Oh, we're getting a nice uh, headshot, Argus view. Perfect, thank you. And there's a really large bamboo coral right behind Hercules. That's Herc-sized bamboo coral, that's oh, awesome. Oh yeah, it's very tall. Yeah, these whip bamboo corals can grow really, really long. It's quite impressive. Go ahead and zoom in, Erin. Nice. Turning your lasers off. Thanks. Beautiful flying. Yeah, this is oh, great. Yeah, right. look at those uh polyps and the way they've closed up in sort of a little sort of volcano looking way. Nice job. We call those volcano yeah. polyps. You along. can see the, the sclerites <laughs> in the there. tissue of those polyps as well. Nice fly in Antonella. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, great job. I'm going to zoom back out on Argus.
Oh, there's a black coral. Looks like Trisopathies. That's a much bigger circle than I intended. <laughs> <laughs> it is on the screen. Oh, okay. We have narrowed it down. Go ahead and zoom, Aaron. Um, it might not be trisopathies. Could be a lilipathies. It looks like uh, the branches are a little bit longer. They're not coming off the coral at 90 degree angles. And so this is definitely different for us for this dive. Yay, a new thing. Yay, I'm glad we looked at it. Otherwise I would have made the assumption that it was something else. We bop around in all of this darkness. I've got a question. Uh, if the lights were off, would the camera be sensitive enough to see bioluminescent creatures? No. 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 So we we have looked for bioluminescence, but we had to bring in a specialty camera to do that. Um, and that was in Mexico, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah. With Dr. Brennan. Um, and yeah, we we used it. There was a fish over there. Well spotted. This is probably a cusk eel. Go ahead and zoom, please. Oh, oh, there he goes. Oh, no. Yep, it, it looks like a cuskiel. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to see its lateral line. That would have told me a little bit more about it. Could have been a basagigas if it had a short lateral line. The lateral line is that line that goes down the side of a fish. Uh, the fish uses that as a yeah, cool Argus sensory yeah. receptor. Hello, Hercules. Oh, ground <laughs> four meters off the deck. Is that where we are? <laughs> oh, that was the lowest, the closest we got. So we're oh, we're wow. into the Argus acrobatics again, are Delta we? Delta Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Just when I recovered. <laughs> Maybe three meters. Lots of room. Three meters. Gosh. It seems scary until you realize this is like the entire mo of an actual tow sled. Oh, yeah. towed over sea mounts? That is terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> they tow at four meters altitude? Or just low, as low oh as they're gosh. comfortable Just with. watching the camera and pulling up on the winch. Oh, yeah. my. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, watch terror, pure terror. Pure terror all the time. <laughs> the that classic one is you, <laughs> oh, you come geez. up to a cliff wall, and you know you're going to hit it. You ask the, the trick is to ask the ship to speed up. Yeah. Yeah, because it pulls up on the winch more than it... Oh, yeah, oh, so like you, like, sort of trail kite behind you. Yeah. yeah. That is exciting. Yeah, very exciting. You ready for a move? Yeah. You sure? <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't sound very sure. I can wait. Let me get a little bit back in position. Okay. And then I think it's just the USBL's happy when we're holding position. Yeah. Sorry? I think the USBL is just happy when we're not moving. Uh, it's been okay. really, really good. And I could actually, before I even put a move in, we can reset your uh, DVL again. Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Okay, you're good. Okay, I'm ready, I think. All right, I'm going to go 200, zero, zero, 50 meters. Okay. Bridge nav, five zero meters, two zero zero.
Bonk. Bonk. Well, we're just seeing the same things over and over again. That's that's pretty much what I've been saying. Uh, we've got a lot of these uh, Ramilla Gorges just <laughs> all over the place. One, two. <laughs> two. <laughs> Do you want to take a closer look at them? Oh, no. We, we've seen enough of them for today. Okay. Sounds good. I'm just having fun with the Telestrator. <laughs> so that's kind of what I do when I'm annotating. Um, I'll actually kind of count each animal out uh, on a freeze frame and then write down how many I saw and then move forward in the video for a little bit and count again, especially when you have these high density communities or uh, a community where you've got the same thing over and over again, and a lot of them. You don't want to re double count anything, so it's uh, really important to pay attention. Oh, there's another fish right there. Three. Fish was hanging out with this uh, dead sponge on the bottom. We've been seeing a lot of these dead sponges, quite large. So this is a cuskeel. And Can I zoom? it's got really long fins. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Let's get some good imagery of this one. This is different. I've never seen and, one with okay. fins like this. Its pectoral okay. fins are just are? absolutely gorgeous and super oh. long. Uh, come on. So uh, our friends on shore at the screenshot sharing group on Facebook, they, they're often taking screenshots during our dives and, and posting them and i hope bruce mundy out there will see a picture of this cuskeel and let us know share. what it is yeah we've got some screenshot shares is that just people at home or scientists or who are yeah they? people at home who are really interested and then they follow um rov dives huh. they're always posting when there's going to be a dive and uh and sharing their favorite screenshots of the animals that we see Which is really great because if I uh, miss a dive, I get okay. all the highlights all in one place, which is amazing. And then uh, Bruce Mundy, who is a fish expert here in Hawaii, he often comments on a lot of these fish uh, identifications and will let us know what they are, which will be really helpful. That was a really good view of the cuskeel. Zoom in, please, Aaron. Oops. This is a gorgeous bamboo coral. This is different from the one that we were looking at just a little bio back. And this one has all of its polyps open, whereas the one we were just looking at had to close their polyps. Where is Argus? Yeah, so we this one so is, um, I, if I was to make a guess, uh, might be What's in that? the bee clade. So it's another unbranched bamboo coral, possibly bee clade.
Science, do you um, want to be on what may be the other side of this ridge where the target is, or just keep continuing up the ridge? Um, we can continue up the ridge. Uh, we don't have to hit that exact target. Okay. Uh, just go in the most comfortable direction. Ooh, can we check out that uh, sea star? Yes. Let's do it. I'm not on SPL. Yes. There was, there might have been a star in our Go ahead and zoom, please. Um, animals of interest that look like this. So I'm going to check that out. Landed. Okay. Is that it? Uh, I think we might want to collect this. This might be one of our animals of interest on our list of animals. Okay. Has really long okay. tube feet. For that. Got it marked as sole austerity question mark. Sure. Go for it. This one looks Should like it's being fairly dramatic. Oh, hmm? yeah. You want me to get a little closer for you? You can't move if we're sampling that. Oh, for, oh, for the, I understand. No, that's good. Sorry. Oh. Argus is right there. <laughs> can I put him in the forward bio box? Yes, you can. Um, they both have things in them, uh, okay. but you can put, can you camera rack back, please? Uh, sure. Is it okay if he goes with okay. another sea star and a white sea cucumber? Oh, yeah, they'll be fine together. Bio box B. Bravo. They're not going to fight, are you sure? No, they won't fight. So that is a valid concern. Um, True, that's right. Starfish do eat other starfish, don't they? Oh, no. Tell me when you want the tray. Oh. Hey now. Stay with me. I don't want to squish you. <laughs> he might suction on his tube feet in a little bit. Here's hoping. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, tilt the camera down, please. Sure. And box out. Sorry, I'm putting him in the in Bravo. Bio box B, bravo, yes. Okay. Oh, look at that. With the cucumber. Yes. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Excuse Sorry. me. See, I told you those <laughs> two. You can feet. close the box. Okay. A strong arm resist. Hey, let go. <laughs> let go. <laughs> Come on, you. Rascal. Oh. Okay, I'll stuff him in. Hit. Hold on there. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, sorry. Oh, open up again. Yep. Yeah. Get in there. Get in there. <laughs> Come on. He's like, no. Do you want a little more? Okay, no, I, that's all we get. Oh, okay, okay, go ahead and close. Swish. Oops. really slow on the up. Okay, arm secure. Okay. Which sample was that? That was zero three seven. Zero three seven. Oh, sorry. I that's totally valid. I definitely would Talk to the sea star. That's something <laughs> I do. Okay, for a move. Okay, we're gonna do one eight five. 
Bridge nav, can we get five zero meters one eight five? Oh, that's a long bamboo pole. All right, so remember that cool uh, cuskiel that we were just imaging? With the big fins? With the big fins, yeah. yeah. Ken Sulak uh, just got back to us in the science chat and said that it is Magistogopterus imperator. And he believes that this is the second image ever of this species. So, nice. yeah, great job, guys. So cool. And this might be the deepest record so far for that genus. Nice. It's uh, only been known to uh, 2,300 meters previously, and we are currently at 27. So that's really, really neat. Mm -hmm. Done. Welcome to the expanse. My goodness. Yeah. Sometimes.
got a question in the chat about uh, fish. Do they sleep like us? I think that depends on the fish, doesn't it? Yeah, most uh, ocean animals don't sleep in the same way we do, um, just because, you know, if you're a mobile animal, like a dolphin or a fish, um, sleeping could be very dangerous, especially if you uh, are a mammal and you need to breathe uh, and you control your breathing with your brain uh, actively, unlike us where our brain will automatically control our breathing for us. We don't have to be conscious to do it. Um, also, just falling asleep completely unconscious can be dangerous if, uh, say, a predator approaches you while you're sleeping uh, and you're not in a safe spot. So you could possibly get eaten. So you want to keep awareness. So no, most fishes do not sleep in the same way we do. It's um, not advantageous for them to sleep in that way. This isn't fish, but don't whales turn off one side of their brain or like half of their brain? Yes. Like, turn off the other half? Turn off? Yeah, turn off. Yeah, quote, like, quote, quote, quote. Not really turn it off, but yeah, they, they do go into a sort of a resting state where they're still aware, but they're um, at a lower level of activity. And then uh, other um, whales will also, you know, since they live in pods, um, they'll form a group that will be protective. Oh. So, like, I believe sperm whales will, will, like, rest vertically in the water column. And they'll also choose to go to different locations that they feel safer. So, like, say, spinner dolphins, uh, they, they travel in large pods, and so they'll come in near to shore, um, where they can rest, and they often do that during the daytime. Yeah, but sleeping in the ocean is definitely a unique challenge. Everybody needs to sleep. And it's even sometimes a unique challenge for us, depending on the weather. I would love to uh, have that uh, whale feature where I can just like kind of, well, maybe I do, maybe I do kind of half, half shut down <laughs> and barely function some days. <laughs> I feel like if everyone knew that we could do that, our work weeks would be longer than 40 hours. Probably. Probably. True. I mean, I know some people's work week are longer than 40 hours, but you know, legally or whatever. All right, legally. Without overtime. Imagine working 80 hours and not getting overtime. Uh, it happens. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here's a question of morality. And actually, it depends on the mission objective, I should say. I should uh, preface. If we found a treasure chest, would we drop our samples to pick it up? No. 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 Never. <laughs> that is the correct answer. But we might <laughs> drop a waypoint on it. <laughs> Oh, we'd be dropping a waypoint. Our navigator knows how to mark things so we can get back to them. <laughs> I love that the way you put that. Our navigator knows how to <laughs> mark 